maybe we can add some effects now to these tracks to give it a little bit of extra feel. And what we're going to do is we're going to just loop, we're going to just loop it now, because um, we have a good melody here and we, we want to mess with it a little bit uh, without having to worry about it stopping playing because it reaches the end. So we're going to hit the loop button and we're going to just drag this to the end here to bar 17 and loop the entire progression here. Okay, so let's um, let's see, let's add some reverb maybe. So maybe let, let's add some reverb to the to the melody, but not to the uh, not to the chord progression. So we're gonna select the melody track here, and you know what? We're gonna differentiate. We're gonna name these tracks correctly. We're gonna call this dog piano melody and chords. Just so we know, just so we remember which is which, because they're both the same icon. Um, so let's see. We're going to click the Smart Controls button up here, and it's going to bring up a bunch of knobs here, which we're going to make bigger so you guys can see them. So we've got a bunch of controls here, as you can see. The one we're going to pay attention to right now is the reverb, which you can see is already turned up a good amount. But of course, we're going to turn it up a little bit more. And you'll see the difference. So I'll I'll play it. I'll uh, I'll solo the melody here and play it just so you can hear what it sounds like before the reverb. All right. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to turn the reverb a good amount up. We're going to turn it up to there, let's say. And then we're also going to turn the ambience up. Now, reverb and ambience, um, they give you more like... Okay, so so echoey is not the proper music production term to use, because echo is something entirely different. Um, but if you ever have like sat in a church, you know, or a large cathedral, you know, um, or like a concert hall, you've heard different types of reverb. And reverb, um, the sound of the reverb effect depends on the size of the room or the size of the space you're in. And ambience is essentially the same thing um, for, for uh, the purposes of this tutorial. It gives the same effect, but um, on a much smaller scale. So we're going to turn the reverb and ambience up, and uh, we're going to play the melody now and hear what it sounds like again. Here, it sounds like we're in a bigger room now. You know, it's not really enough. Let's turn it up more. Let's try it like that. Not a little bit too much. There we go. So let's let's play everything together now. On solo. Here we go. You know what? That's not the same reverb effect of the chords here. So we've we've switched to the chords track. So we're gonna turn the reverb up like that, and the ambience to there. Leave everything else the same. And then of course it loops because it reaches the end and we set loop on. So I'm not gonna lie guys, this sounds really pretty good. And this is how songs get started, you know, you just mess around, find a melody that sounds cool, and put some chords to it and just boom, you know, go from there. So um Let's see, what else can we do to this now? It's for the purposes of the tutorial. Let's um hmm. let's add one more track to this. Let's go ahead and add maybe a drummer track. 
So we're going to hit plus again. There we go. And we're going to add a drummer track. Nice. Drummer tracks are really cool. And you'll see, wow, okay, it put in some regions for us. That's what drummer tracks do. But you know what? We want to start this from the beginning. So we are going to go ahead and select these two regions here and delete them by just hitting delete. And we're going to also collapse this library window because we don't need to worry about that right now. I'll focus on drummers in a later review, uh, later tutorial. So just minimize that. Okay, we've got the track uh, editor here, but nothing's in it except for this dude, Kyle, um, which I'll explain in a second what, the, what all the faces are about. Um, create a region on the drummer track. All right, here's the drummer track. So we're going to create a region right here. And you'll see it sets it automatically to the length of the region in that section uh, in which you clicked, which is really pretty cool. So, and then a bunch of stuff pops up. So you also you'll notice, you may notice that the color of the region here of the drummer track is yellow. Um, GarageBand uses different colors to differentiate different types of regions. So drummer tracks will have yellow regions, software instrument tracks will have green regions, and audio tracks will have blue and or orange uh, tracks or regions, uh, sorry. So that's, that's what the different colors are. Um, so drummer tracks, I think I explained briefly earlier um, what a drummer track is, but as you'll see, if we click this menu here in the track editor, we've got a whole bunch of genres here of music. And these are all different drummers, essentially. Think of it literally like you're in a studio recording your song, and you're like, hmm, which genre song do I want to make? What type of drummer do I need? What type of drummer does that style? What does what? What type of style of drumming do I want? And that's gonna um, that's gonna determine which drummer you choose out of the portfolio of drummers that have signed up um, for your recording session. So here we have rock, alternative, songwriter, R and B, electronic, and hip hop. Electronic and hip hop they added in the last update. Um, I must say I've been using the the those drummers profusely. They're very good. I enjoy using them. Um, so highly, highly recommend. But for right now, we're going to stay in rock, probably, because they're pretty much the most basic. So we're going to start with rock here. And you'll see when we click that, we got a whole bunch of different dudes here. Uh, we got Kyle, who's pretty much just like the default, um, you know, rock drummer. That you know that uh, he's he's really good. You know, very straightforward, nothing complex, um, very ordinary. We've got Logan, who's uh, who's like you know classic rock. Uh, his description says legendary drum heroes of the past uh, on a retro sounding kit. Um, so that's another one. We've got Anders, who's more metal. Um, we've got Max, who's incredibly metal. Um, hyperactive punk rock, according to the description. Um, we've got Jesse, who's very like uh, funky and swing um, oriented. Then we've got Ian, who's like the Beatles, basically, um, or is, you know, psychedelic rock. Um, that is very very simple um, and heavy. So um, we're gonna we're gonna just use Kyle for right now because he is simple and uh, Kyle's Kyle's pretty cool. We're gonna click on Kyle. We've got Kyle uh, plays straightforward rock beats on a natural versatile kit. All right, thanks Kyle for signing up to be our drummer today. Um, so for the first drum region here, you can see we've got a whole bunch of controls here, and the drummer is just so customizable. There's like almost infinite options for what you can have your drum region be um, with all the different options. So these are presets over here for different drum patterns. So let's try, for example, let's see what Crash the Party sounds like with our current uh, controls here. You see it switches around a bunch of controls here on the track, and we're going to play this to see what it sounds like. Pretty cool. That actually sounds really good. Right, so first time is the charm. And you'll see it'll just end. Cool. But we're actually going to keep that um, that that drum preset, because dang, that sounds really good. First try. Um, and then you can see we have this grid here um, that, that controls um, the... the um, uh, you've got on one axis you've got um, loudness versus softness and then simpleness versus complexity. Um, so for example, if I were to if I were to move this dot like way farther over here, if I were to drag it like to there, you would see the drum beat has now changed and we have a much more simple drum beat. 
a little bit more simple. Right? And of course, um, if we were to move it down, it would get a lot quieter there. So he's very quiet now. And maybe since this is the sort of intro, we'll say this is the intro part of our song, we'll make it quiet um, and fairly simple, you know, because it's just, just the intro. So next we're going to move it over here, and you see we've got a bunch of controls here. Um, we've got, um, we've got, We've got uh, we've got a bunch of different like parts of the drum kit here, which are highlighted. Now you have got basically uh, two or three, I guess, elements to the drum kit. GarageBand divides the drum kit up into three, or sorry, four um, different sort of categories of um, instrument. So here we've got, if you can see, if we mouse over the kick drum here, we've got uh, kick and snare. Then we've got um, either um, toms. Uh, cymbals or hi hats, which we can have any one of the three in our like drum arrangement, um, in our drum beat for this region alone. And then we've got percussion, which is tambourine, either tambourine, maracas, uh, or uh, hands. <laughs> clapping, clapping is is what that is. Not hands. That's a stupid way to say it. Um, so those are all the different parts of the drum kit, and we'll we'll discuss how to add those uh, to the beat in just one second. After we go over drum fills and swing. So drum fills are basically like when you go from one drum region to another, or um, one pattern of drumming to the next, you have to have a fill, you know, which sort of is like a transition. So you'll see if we turn the fill, this is this knob basically controls how aggressive and how often um, your drummer will do drum fills. So you can command him, hey, Kyle, would you do some more drum fills, bro? So now if we play this, you'll see. See, we've got some more drum fills in there. And um, you'll you'll notice that um, that uh, uh, the 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 drummer the drum track will automatically put a drum fill at the end of the region, no matter where the end of the region is. So, for example, if you wanted to split the region right here, um, by the way, you can split regions by hitting Command and T. So, if you, if you put the the, um, the playhead right here, we want to split it there. Hit Command T. It'll split it into two separate regions along that line, and you notice. You have a new drum fill right here before the end of the region. So now if we play it, we'll turn off loop. <laughs> Sounds pretty good actually, but uh, I think we have a few too many drum fills now for the intro. So let's select both these regions and turn the drum fills down a bit. Maybe it's like to half. Let's see how that sounds. Again, experimentation. Just keep experimenting until it sounds the way you want it to sound. You know, maybe since we're at the end of the region here, right at nine bars, maybe we'll add a bit more of an aggressive drum fill to that. So let's turn that up a little bit. You can see it's only changing it for this one little region here, since we only have that region selected. So let's go ahead and play just this region. Nice. So now, let's go ahead and um, look at some other controls here. So we've got um, all the different parts of the drum kit here. Oh, my bad, I forgot to go over the swing. Okay, swing, swing, right, swing. I don't use swing too often, but that's basically if you've ever heard like the blues when you have those really heavy, you know, drum beats that are, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do some swing and you'll, you'll recognize it. So we'll turn the swing, we'll put it on eighth notes and go to 64, 65%. There we go. And we'll play it and you'll hear, hear the difference now. We'll actually solo the, uh, the, the drum track here. Oh, listen to that swing. Let's turn the swing off. There's regular and swing. 
nice and swingy. And then you can, of course, you can also throw in 16th notes, but unless you have, um, like, rapid-fire uh, parts of the drum kit, like hi-hats or whatever, you're not really going to hear 16th note swing. And you'll see that by, if I turn 16th note swing up. Might hear it down here. A little bit. Anyway, we don't really want any swing for this song because it's not terribly funky. Um, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and leave it just the way it is. We're going to unsolo the drums here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the different uh, parts of the drum key here. So I actually like the way the toms sound, but for example, we're going to leave it on toms. Um, but basically the way it works is for each instrument, like for kick and snare, and for toms and all these and percussion, we have different patterns, which are designated by the different settings here, and there's a number assigned to each one. So for example, right now, kick and snare, we have it on pattern 3, and then toms, we have it on pattern 2, Percussion, we have it on pattern one, although percussion is currently turned off. So each each drummer will have different patterns, entirely different patterns for every single part of the drum kit, um, which is crazy because there's so many different patterns. Um, it's it's really great. It's really great. And of course, the patterns can also be louder, softer, simpler, or more complex depending on where you put that dot. Um, in the in the in the grid there, and of course also the the presets um, will just give you um, preset values for all the patterns, complexity, loudness, um, fills, and swing basically, um, which is pretty cool. And which parts of the drum kit you have enabled, and that's just what the presets are. But we're going to do this ourselves because that's the, the cool way to do it. So let's actually switch this from toms to hi hats by clicking hi hats. And now you see, now we have no toms, we have hi hats. So now if we play it. kind of quiet because you can't hear the difference, but have you noticed that there, there are no toms anymore? Or at least not in the main part of the drum beat. You know, that's not very complex. Let's try a different pattern of hi-hats. Let's try a pattern two. Start from the beginning. Okay, so pattern pattern two sounds a little bit better. Let's see. Not bad. Just for curiosity, let's try pattern three. Sounds better, I think. I feel like I can I can probably notice the different notice the difference while um, viewers like can't because I've worked with GarageBand <laughs> for ages and I know like all the drum patterns uh, by heart. So um, there, I promise you there is a difference between um, the <laughs> the hi hat patterns. Um, let's just try number four. You you really notice the difference uh, between pattern four and the rest of them. Let's see. Yes rapid-fire hi-hats. Personally, I don't think that sounds as good, though, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave it on um, pattern 3. And then another thing I've noticed is that the hi-hats are, like, here in the um, in the intro, the, the hi-hats, even though they are quiet, like, and the drums are supposed to be quiet, the hi-hats are really, like, too quiet. So we're going to switch over here to the Smart Controls tab up here. <clears throat> and these are all the drum controls here. So um, these mix knobs over here, um, uh, kick, snare, toms, hi-hat cymbals, and percussion, um, those all control the, the volume of each uh, of the instruments that it's labeled with. So um, if, and if you click this lighted button next to each one, that'll just turn it off altogether. So if you just don't want to even hear your kicks, just turn the kicks off. But we do want to hear kicks. So... Um, we're going to leave that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here um, to hi-hat. We're going to turn them up a bit. Let's try like that. That's better. OK. 
Okay, and um, this smart controls tab here does change um, attributes for the entire track, not just for this region. So the hi-hats will now be louder in every region um, of, of this track. Um, in addition, we have, we have compression and we have tone. Um, compression is compression. It's complicated to explain. I'll do a tutorial on it later, I promise. Um, effects tone will just change uh, basically the, um, the equalization of the different, you know, uh, frequencies. It'll make it sound um, a little bit, you know, different. And it's, it's um, just something that you should experiment with and see if you like uh, the, the way it changes the sound of the drums. And then room is a special type of reverb that makes it sound like you're playing the drum kit in a really small room. Or, I'm sorry, makes it sound like Kyle is playing the drums in a very small room. Um, so yeah, that's what room does. We're just going to leave those alone for now. We can try and tweak it later if we want. But we're just here to turn the hi-hats up. So we've done that, so we're going to go back to the track editor. And, um, alright, so we, we decided we like the hi-hat pattern. We're going to leave the kick and snare pattern the same, because we also decided we liked that um, when we first did the... Uh, um, the when you first added in the drum regions here. One thing to note though about the kick and snare patterns is you'll see down here if you mouse over the kick and snare pattern selector here, you'll see there's all the way at the end there's there's one labeled one half and there's one labeled two X. Now one half is half time, which uh, if I switch it to half time, let's play the, the regular one again here just so you know. That's that's regular time. So now we'll switch it to halftime and here's what it sounds like in halftime so that's that's a given pattern but we don't we don't want halftime and then double time is um, punk rock metal That's, that's what double time is. So we're going to leave it on pattern 3, though, because it sounds the best, um, in my opinion. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's look at some percussion here. Let's add maybe, let's see, let's try tambourine, pattern 1. Let's try pattern 2, maybe. I like that. Also, the tambourines are also really quiet, the percussion, so I'm going to turn the percussion up a bit. Like that, let's try that. So there we go. Sounds pretty good. Um, let's try maybe tweaking the, the like, room. Let's try room. I honestly don't think that sounds any better, so I'm going to leave room off. Let's try, so compression, I'm just going to play it for right now the, with the effect, without the effect, and with the effect, and see if you can see if you can spot the difference. This is clean, this is without the effect. And right, now let's play it with some compression. Heavy, heaviest, highest compression ratio. Did it? No. Right, here we go. Sounds really punchy. That's the compression working. It's actually, I like the sound of the compression, but I think it's a bit too extreme. So let's turn that compression down a little bit. I think the compression will sound a lot better when the drums are louder. So let's, let's go ahead and leave that compression on and see how it fits with the rest of the song here. Okay, let's see. Why don't we try... Hmm. Let's, um, let's make it a bit louder here, like when it, when it gets, when the, when the chord pattern changes. And we don't want to synthesize an entirely new region um, for the drum kit, because then it's going to go like wild and randomize all the controls again. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy drum regions we already have and tweak them. So we're going to copy and paste them, just like a different region. And you notice we get an exact copy of the region, which we don't want, because any you know good drummer obviously will never repeat exactly, you know, hit for hit the exact same drum beat in every in every measure. So we're going to just 
move the knob slightly. Actually, we're going to make it a bit louder. So let's move it up like that. And you notice now it's going to regenerate here. We'll do the same for the second region there. Right there we go. So let's hear what it sounds like. It's a little bit louder. You know what? Let's make it a bit more complex also. I like that. Let's see. Did it change it for change it for both of them? All right. I'm feeling like this drum fill right there is a is a bit too complex. Let's turn the fills down a bit for that track. That sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> 